Hello, this is Josh. My name is Josh McDowell. I'm opening today in the video as if this was my first video because I want to introduce you to a new website. New website called apostatepastor.com and I want to tell you why I picked that name, apostatepastor.com. Uh, back in 2013, there had been a series of people calling me an apostate and calling me blasphemer and calling me um, all kinds of names. There was a there was a gentleman that was a groomsman in my wedding, um, had been a close friend for a real short period of time in my life, and uh, he ended up um, some years later uh, because of my ministry and because of my church and because of what I was teaching, basically said that I was an apostate and that as such he could not even shake my hand. I had reached out and said, hey, let me buy you lunch. Let's talk. I knew he had had some problems with some of the things I taught, and uh, he said, Josh, I can't even shake your hand. You're an apostate, and I have to stay, I have to keep my distance from you, blah, blah, blah. And so some friends and I laughed about that. And in 2013, we started a Facebook group called the Apost they're called Apostate Posse. Apostate Posse. Well, after some time, I have decided now in 2018, it's time to start a website called apostatepastor.com. I want to tell you why. I embrace the idea of an apostate, of apostate pastor. I want to go through the understand, an understanding of what the word apostate means. So uh, let's start apostate, pastor, apostasy. Let's talk about those words. Apostate, it's a person who renounces a religious or a political belief or principle. Can you think of any religious or political beliefs that you would reject? Any principles that you would renounce? I can certainly think of a bunch. And actually, I'm going to do a series um, both at A Place to Talk and here on video over the coming days about some of the things that I reject, some of the things I renounce, some political and religious beliefs that I passionately, passionately renounce. But today I want to tell you about the one that will probably kind of be my life message. This will be the one that I reject with the most passion, um, and it's been the the one that has strongly just kind of been embedded and put on my heart. I believe it's embedded in my soul and it's who, part of who I am. And this is a belief, a theory, a principle, a practice, a theology that I passionately and wholeheartedly renounce. Um, and it's, it has to do with pastor. So I'm tying apostate and pastor to me and to this website because I want to renounce some ideas of what a pastor is. Here, uh, if you look what people also ask, what is the job of a pastor? A pastor is the spiritual leader over a group of people or congregation. That's what I renounce. That's one of the things that I most passionately renounce, is the idea that a pastor is over the people or above the people or uh, in any of those ways. Matthew 23, 8, 9, and 10, Jesus tells us not to call anyone on earth our uh our leader, our teacher, our father. And when you ask a group of people, what are you looking for in a pastor? They basically tell you all kinds of things that they're looking for in a pastor. But if you were to sum them down, they fall into three categories. The category of leader, this category of father, and the category of teacher. They're looking for a good leader, a good teacher, and a good father. Well, I reject, I renounce the idea of pastoral authority. And so apostate pastor Dot com will be my personal website, apostatepastor.com. Apostasy is simply the abandonment or the renunciation of a religious or a political belief. There are so many religious and political beliefs that I renunciate, that I abandoned, that I uh, consider invalid. So, so I'm going to uh, talk about those in the coming days, and there'll be these videos, and I'll do a series called Apostate Pastor, and apostatepastor.com is my new personal web website. If you go to the go to a, look for a word in the in the Bible that is translated like apostate or apostasy, you would find that in Acts and Second Corinth, uh, Second Thessalonians. We'll talk about those two passages in the coming days. But that word is just the falling away, the defection, the apostasy. And I would say I have fallen away from the. Um, religious right, evangelical, American uh, church idea. And so I'll say I was, I've fallen away from that. I've defected from that, that idea. So to them, I am an apostate. Um, 
apostatepastor.com. I want you to go there. I want you to check it out. It's under development. There's a lot of work to be done, but, but basically it's going to be a place where I kind of share my heart. Uh, I want to give us one passage today. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2, and I'm going to read through this passage in a bunch of, bunch of different translations because I want to give you three ideas of the reason that I'm going with this idea, apostatepastor.com. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the Word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. That's the New International Version. I want to say first, I want to say three things today. Number one, I renounce pastoral authority and the secrets and shame that often goes along with it. You say, Josh, what do you mean by that? Well, when a pastor believes that they are the authority, they are the leader, they are the final word, the final decision maker in a church, they have a tendency, not all, not all. There's some great pastors out there. There's some great people that use the term pastor that go by Pastor John or Pastor Bob or Pastor whatever. And, and I'm not renouncing them, but I'm renouncing the tendency that happens when we call ourselves a pastor and we have this idea of pastoral authority and we, because of that, start doing things in secret and we start shaming people and we start deceiving people and we start manipulating people. And so all of that shame and deceit that goes along with the concept of pastoral authority, I renounce. All right, second. I'm going to give you read this same passage in a few more chapters, a few more translations. English Standard Version says, "But we have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word. But by the open statement of truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God." The message says, "We refuse to wear masks and play games. We don't maneuver." and manipulate behind the scenes. And we don't twist God's word to suit ourselves. Rather, we keep everything we do and stay and say out in the open the whole truth on display so that those who want to, see, want to can see and judge for themselves in the presence of God. I want to be as transparent as I possibly can. Uh, but the second idea that I renounce is the idea that the Bible is God's word. We reserve, I reserve the title, God's Word for Jesus. Jesus is God's Word. What language did God speak to us? He spoke the language of Jesus. What better way than to come himself and take on the form of a human body and to live and to speak and to teach? So when you ask me, what is God's Word? I say, Jesus. You say, is God's Word infallible? I say, Jesus is infallible. You say, is God's Word inerrant? I say, Jesus is inerrant. When you say, is God's Word inspired? I say, Jesus is inspired. When you say, is the Bible God's Word? I say, no, Jesus is God's Word. When you say, is the Bible infallible? I say, no, it's not infallible. The Bible's got all kinds of garbage in it. You say, is the Bible inspired? Well, yeah, I think there's some inspiration involved, but it's not perfectly inspired. When you say, is the Bible inerrant? I would say, no, it's not inerrant. It's not infallible. Is it inspired? Sure. But the Bible is not God's word. Jesus is the God's word. So I renounce, number two, I renounce the idea that the Bible is God's word, word, and I reserve that title for Jesus. We'll get to number three here. Let's read it in the English Standard again. But we have renounced disgraceful and underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. Look again, manifestation of truth, manifestation of the truth. This is the King James and the New American Standard. It uses that word manifestation. And the English Standard uses the open statement of the truth, open Manifestation. Manifestation. What does the word manifestation mean? It means to make manifest or visible, to know what has been hidden or unknown, to manifest. It's to show it. It's to reveal it. And this is a word that I could, I would, I would use as the word transparency. It's about being transparent. Transparency. I think that one of the things that causes a lack of transparency is sometimes the just whole church hierarchy. You know, in the Catholic Church, and I, I'm not picking on the Catholics. Uh, one of my favorite theologians of all times, Richard Rohr. He's a Catholic. But the Catholic clergy is organized in a strict, sometimes overlapping hierarchy. you got the Pope and the Cardinals and the Archbishops and the Bishops and the Priests and the Deacons. And you've got this 
church hierarchy. I want to say that I renounce church hierarchical, hierarchical structures that preclude healthy transparency. You say, what do you mean by that, Josh? Well, I mean that the Pope has those people or, or whatever it is. Maybe it's the pastor and you got these elders and you have this board of trustees and you have this chairman of deacons and the board of deacons and you have these all of these hierarchical structures and what they do is they say they have they, they have a tendency to say well this information we can talk about at this level and then this information we can let slip down to this level and this information can we can and then the people down here all of the regular people they're not involved in the the, the, the decision making and they don't understand what's going on and you go why did you make that decision well we can't really explain it to you if you were on this level and you had all of this information then you'd understand why we made this decision there's something about church hierarchy hierarchical structures that preclude transparency you say Josh you're crazy that's insane when you start letting everything be known all the way down to the bottom you're gonna have all kinds of fights and arguments it's not like there weren't fights and arguments in the church hierarchical systems. So those are the three things that I renounce. The three things that I'm going to renounce is I renounce church hierarchical structures that preclude healthy transparency. I renounce the idea that the Bible is God's word and I reserve that title for Jesus. And I renounce pastoral authority and the secrets and shame that often go along with it. And that's why I have started and I will... Um, from this day forward, kind of, kind of my personal website will be apostatepastor.com. If you have any questions for me, uh, any thoughts, any comments, you're welcome to email me at josh at apostatepastor.com.